AVC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, just kind of trying to get back in the swing of things. So I'm coming back to do a recent finds video. Uh, stuff has just kind of come in over, I don't know how many weeks it's been since I've done a recent finds video. Uh, even though it feels like I haven't been out digging that much, stuff has definitely been kind of adding up. But I did have to go out to New Mexico for about just under a week or so. So while I was out there, I was able to hit a few shops. Um, you know, of course, working at the shop, picking up stuff here and there. And, and there was a record show about three weeks ago that I went to where I uh, didn't really have plans on picking up much of anything and just kind of stumbled across some really great stuff there. So uh, definitely some good additions, but let's just kind of jump right into it. The first one I'll start off with here is um, one that I was very pumped with the pumped about which is the new Godsmack lighting up the sky that just came out a few weeks ago uh, you know Godsmack being my favorite album of course I'm gonna be extremely excited about this one um, and I won't go into a, a gigantic review here because this is about recent finds and not reviewing the specific album but uh, like I said Godsmack's my absolute favorite band and um, you know this album my first listen it kind of left me a little disappointed um, you know, I, I originally kind of went to Godsmack, but when I discovered Godsmack, what drew me to them was a kind of the simplicity of what they did, just kind of the big rhythmic, you know, kind of the, the new metal, you know, very groovy rhythmic type of thing. And on the last two albums, they've kind of gone away from that a little bit, and especially on this one. Like on this one, there's actually guitar solos, which is kind of something that you virtually never hear on a Godsmack song. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it was kind of like, you know, always great to get a new Godsmack album. I don't care if it's horrible or whatever else. I, I want every Godsmack album I can get. Uh, I say that about all the artists that I love. I, I'm never one of those people that thinks, oh, you know, like Ozzy or someone puts out this album and it sucks and it's horrible. You just shouldn't have blah, blah. It's like, no. Anytime we get, in, get another album from Ozzy, anytime we get another album from, you know, just kind of any of these legends that are not going to be around forever, it's a good day to get another album by a great, great group of great artists. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I'll kind of give this some listens though, because when Legend, when Legends Rise, their album before this, that was one. The first time I heard it, I was like, yeah, I'm not really feeling this. And now, four of the songs off of that album are in my top 20 favorite Godsmack songs. So, you know, that one clicked later for me, and I, I, I love it to death. I might listen to it more than any other Godsmack album right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to let this one kind of soak in and get a feel for where they were going and what they were doing, and we'll see. But, like I said, any day to get a, a new Godsmack album is a great one. And that's the black vinyl, and then here you have the, the blue vinyl, that I pre the marble blue that I pre-ordered from the, the Godsmack website. So, uh, I had to get, get both versions there. So, that's awesome. Very cool reissue here, De La Soul, uh, Three Feet and Rising, another just kind of classic hip hop album that's been, you know, extremely hard to get. So finally, they're glad they finally got this back on the presses, even though it sold out pretty quick and it's kind of hard to get again just that fast. But yeah, just a total classic from 1989 and glad to finally have that on vinyl. Uh, next here, one that I picked up at the show, uh, Alphaville, this is Forever Young. As you can see, they're just a, a beautiful gold stamp promo copy of that. Not a white label, but just a gold stamp promo. I uh, was really happy to find this because I did have an OG pressing of this and I purged it when I went through that big purge a number of years ago, you know, getting rid of everything that wasn't in perfect condition. And so this was one. And, um, and so, yeah, it, it was nice to kind of come across another one. And I mean, I, I do have the reissue, that European reissue, I think that came out six years ago or something like that, which sounds fantastic, but, you know, wanted to get an OG one back in my collection and, uh, you know, but promo is definitely a great way to go about doing that. So great one there. And of course, you know, the title track, Forever Young and a bunch of other great stuff there. Um, next here, Fleetwood Mac. As you can see this nice MoFi pressing of the self-titled there. Uh, again, classic album. You guys know all about this one, you know, with Rihanna and just, you know, all, all the, the amazing stuff that's on this album. But uh, yeah, just to find a beautiful near mint, near mint um, MoFi pressing of that, that was a great addition to the collection. That was one, uh, one of the ones I picked up at the show that I wasn't exactly expecting. And then you have the Naughty by Nature, just the 30th anniversary. 
um, you know, this is the one with Hip Hop Hooray, all that great stuff on there. But, you know, the last couple years, they've been doing a pretty good job of kind of getting the naughty stuff reissued. So another great one there to get back in the collection. And then uh, this might, might be one of the most exciting ones throughout everything that I've picked up here recently, which is this Heart Little Queen. As you can see, just a beautiful copy of the CBS Half Speed Remaster. Um, you know, I love these pressings, love picking them up when I find them in great condition. And so when you combine that with such a great legendary album as well, you know, Barracuda, all that great stuff on there. This was an absolute gem. So I was so happy to pick that up. Very, very clean too, which is nice. And uh, I got that from the same person I got the Fleetwood Mac. And he also had this, which was the City to City by Rafferty there. Um, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of all of his stuff, but this is his album that I do love the most. Uh, you know, especially with the song like Baker Street and stuff like that. So it began to find out just a beautiful MoFi pressing of that. Just another great, beautiful addition to the collection. Um, got this one in New Mexico and I mentioned I was out there. A nice little, I think it was like six bucks I paid for it or something like that. That's an old Tower record sticker on there. But Al Green, Soul Survivor. This is kind of Al doing his mixture of soul and gospel and that type of thing. And has a... Uh, the song on there, he's coming back, which is just like, I mean, gospel just shouldn't be that freaking funky and that freaking soulful. It's just, it's, it's just a great, great album. So glad to pick it up. You know, nice. It's still in the shrink with the hype sticker and everything, which is kind of cool too. And I'm sorry, it's not. He's coming back. It's everything's gonna be all right. That's the name of the song. But yeah, so great addition. And that, that's another one of those albums that, you know, it's kind of, it's a five, six dollar album. I mean, it's like not expensive at all, but uh, I've been waiting around so long to find one in mint condition. They just do not pop up that often at all. So that's kind of one of those, you know, you don't want to use the word grail, but just one of those cheap, cheap albums you've been searching for for a long time. So it's nice to finally get that. And then here, another one I was kind of glad to show they put some reissues out, which is the Ball Beat. Um, and this is uh, Outlaws, Gentlemen, and Shady Ladies. Um, you know, I'm not the biggest, biggest fan of Ball Beat, but this is by far my favorite album. And, um, you know, and up until kind of these reissues just kind of popped out, you know, you had to pay, look at paying basically $100 or somewhere in that ballpark to get a copy. So uh, I was really, really pumped when this finally came out. Actually comes with the CD as well, two LP set. But um, yeah, definitely my favorite album by them. And I've always, I say this all the time, every time I talk about Ball Beat, because uh, there's very specific songs I like by them, and most of them are on this album, um, especially with songs like Lola Montez, which is my absolute favorite song by them. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the one thing that I always have to remark about them when I start talking Ball Beat is, uh, what's his name, the lead singer, has one of the most amazing voices just like when it comes to the, the whole hard rock or you know whatever you want to label this in this day and age, his voice is just absolutely amazing. And I remember seeing them when they opened for Metallica and I wasn't very excited about it because again, I wasn't a Vol Beat fan and all of that. And most of the songs they played, I did not like. But even when you listen to a song you don't like, it's easy to sit back and listen to his voice and just go like, that guy has some freaking pipes. And a very few singers that I've experienced live that have no difference between the studio album that they put out and what he sounds like live. Like there is no difference in the quality of his voice and his singing and, uh, you know, just everything. Just remarkable, true, fantastic voice. So anyway, great that that, that got reissued. Another one I found out in New Mexico, which was kind of cool, because I've not, never actually seen this on vinyl myself, uh, which is EMF, and of course it's just Sherbert Dip from 1991, and anyone who does know this album or know the group, you probably know them from the song Unbelievable, uh, which of course is on this album. So again, another very cool pickup, because I've actually never seen this on vinyl myself when I, until I stumbled across it. And next here, another great pickup, which is the Pat Benatar. And this is basically a, it's a greatest hits, it's best shots. So it's just, uh, it's from 1989. Again, not the easiest Pat to find, but just an awesome greatest hits album. Uh, the Pat CDs I used to listen to all the time, this was it. So it's nice to have it on vinyl. 
and just everything you would expect on a Pat Benatar's greatest hits with Love is a Battlefield, Promises in the Dark, We Live for Love, Hells for Children, uh, Heartbreaker, Invincible, We Belong, Hit Me With Your Best Shot, on and on and on. So a great, great album there. Um, and then you have uh, Roy Sop here. Um, this is, uh, wasn't it Lost Tapes? And I'm actually not that familiar with this album. Uh, I have another one of their albums that I've, you know, always kind of liked. Uh, I really fell in love with them with that song, You Remind Me. You know, they, uh, what was that, Geico? I think they used it on the commercial. And that's where I first heard of it, on that Geico commercial. And I just thought, that's a cool song. It just has a great feel to it. And that led me to the band. And so had an opportunity to pick this up and haven't actually listened to it all yet so I'm not sure if I'm going to dig this a lot or not but definitely was worth kind of the check out so uh, we'll have to give that a full spin before I can even really comment on it uh, but was willing to kind of give it a try Club Navarra here which of course is their, their release from 1986 uh, Life, Love and Pain again another one of those albums that I've just been kind of waiting for a near mint copy to pop up somewhere it's, it's a typical you know six maybe ten dollar album not expensive or anything like that it's just mint copies don't pop up so another great great one to have and i actually did buy one of these it's still down there i think i got rid of it already um yeah i bought one of these probably about six months ago seven months ago and it just looked absolutely fantastic and for some reason on the first track it had like this little warp or something that was there that made the first track skip a little bit and I was just like freaking thought I had one and then you know just looked beautiful all the way across so it's nice to actually finally get one in the collection <laughs> um, and here you know you have songs like uh, you know jealousy um, you know why you treat me so bad and, and probably like, probably the biggest song that most people may know off of here was their cover of lean on me that they did um, kind of the more upbeat, dancey, poppy kind of thing. Uh, Why You Treat Me So Bad, that's a song that's been sampled by a number of different groups, including uh, I Got Five on it by the Loonies, you know, a pretty, I guess, popular hip hop song that was uh, sampled, you know, note for note from that. So really, really cool album there. Again, another one of those inexpensive albums, just glad to finally find. Berlin, this is Greatest Hits. Another great one here of 1977 to 19, 1979 to 1988. This is another one of those CDs I used to have back before I collected vinyl that I played to no end. So to finally stumble across this on vinyl, another great one there. Just an awesome Greatest Hits album from 1988. And I mean, you know, you know all their stuff, Take My Breath Away and all that fantastic stuff, but great copy of that. And this I picked up just because uh, I really like the cover, quite frankly. Uh, you know, I have all the Jim Croce studio albums, and this is just kind of a greatest hits, you know, down the highway. But I just saw that cover, and I don't know, it's just one of the things where you look at the artwork there and see him sitting on the side of the road, and it just kind of spoke to me. And it was only like $5, I think. And as you can see, in just fantastic condition. So never go wrong having a, a Jim Croce's greatest hits with, you know, stuff like I Got a Name and New York's Not My Home and uh, You Don't Mess Around with Jim. You know, operator, just all, all that great stuff. Love it, love it, love it. And then just a couple of things that I just kind of got just to throw in the collection, quite frankly. I'm just kind of flashed it really quick. Uh, Elton John, Too Low for Zero. Another one I've just been waiting on to get a, a nice clean copy of that um, from 1983. And again, here you have, you know, I'm Still Standing and... Um, you know, which is, I think was kind of the first Elton John song that I ever really knew and liked. I think was I'm, I'm Still Standing. Um, and I guess that's why they call it the blues, of course. Another huge hit off of that. A uh, little quest for fire. Some of you old heads, you probably remember this movie a bit. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of a cool score off of that movie. Um, people that haven't seen the movie, like, this is early, age, like, 82 it's basically just kind of about early man, if you will, uh, Neanderthals, <laughs> um, just kind of looking for fire, plain and simple. And the entire movie, there's no English, there's no, you know, modern day language. It's all just kind of, you know, grunts and blah, blah, blah. Uh, what's her name? Um, 
What's her name? Totally going brain dead here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, well, it's not about the movie, but anyway. One of those classics, ones that I watched growing up, so the soundtrack's kind of cool there. And then, of course, Hoosiers stumbled across a beautiful copy of that, so you, know, you gotta have that legendary one there. Um, it's kind of cool, too, because I was actually driving to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, I don't remember how long ago this was, like maybe four years ago, five years ago. And driving along the way, and I saw a sign, like, I forgot what town it was in Indiana that said, like, Hoosiers Gym, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, is that what I think it is? And sure as heck, it's the gym where they shot Hoosiers, which was kind of neat. And it's kind of just like a little thing where it's not a, they don't, they don't make a gigantic deal about it. You can just go in. There's no entry fee or whatever. You can go on to the court. They let you just kind of shoot around and everything in the court. You can go down into the locker rooms where they shot, you know, different scenes in the film. And uh, I said no tickets or anything. They they like for you to make a donation if you want, but nothing's required. So it was, it was really kind of cool. But anyway, I mean, again, classic movie. You guys know that one inside and out. So another great soundtrack there. So uh, anyway, there you go, VC. Just kind of a quick update on a few new things. Uh, as always, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking in. Um, hopefully, again, I'm trying to get more back on a regular schedule here and uh, be get, get to be a little more active again. But appreciate you guys stopping by, and we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, VC.